Real quick before we go, there's uh, this may probably isn't installed on your system, but there's a really handy program, it's really a file system called SSHFS. What SSHFS does is it basically allows you to mount an external drive locally, or it lets you mount anything you have access to via SSH locally. So the way SSHFS works, and if it's not installed, you can install it by sudo after you install SSHFS. It seems to be installed by default on the VM. Okay, cool. Maybe that was intelligent. Um, so say that I, I don't want to just have to like R sync my files back and forth to the Elder servers, right? Say I want every my Elder home directory to be to look like a subfolder to my current directory. So Linux file systems is kind of a core concept of. You can actually mount separate drives anywhere in the file tree and just kind of extend the file tree. So like when you plug in a USB drive, it mounts that as a folder somewhere in the file tree. Those files are on a different disk than the other things on the tree, but it looks like one big file tree. Windows doesn't have this. Windows, you plug in a different drive, it's a different uh, USB, it's a different drive. There is none of that in Linux. It's one big file tree. When you connect a new store, it's something else on the tree. So you can do the same thing with SSH. I can say, I'm going to create a folder in my home directory, and that folder on that folder, I'm going to mount, essentially, my home directory running via SSH on LROP. So I can have a folder that I go into, and it shows me everything on LROP. Uh, and when I make changes in it, it's saving on LROP. I mean, everything in that folder is actually on LROP. It's just on the back end. It's copying things back and forth for me. So obviously, SSHFS is not something you would use if you're in an extremely bandwidth-constrained environment. It would be the slowest file system ever. But in the age of broadband, and when you're on campus with the wireless and infinite bandwidth, you can essentially uh, mount the Elra or whatever and use it as a store. So that was kind of boring. The way I use this is this is how I get my giant 12 terabyte server holding music at home to allow me to play music anywhere I have internet connection, right? I can essentially mount my music drive sitting on the other side of Boulder right now on my local machine, pull up any old audio program, and just start playing files like the local files because Linux doesn't make a difference to them, it's all local. SSHFS is running in the background and handling it. So, um, I ran this command earlier, so I'm just gonna go through my history. So, the command, the way the command works, I mean, it's similar to the way a lot of these things work. SSHFS followed by the name of the folder I want to mount on, so this has to be an empty folder and has to exist. So, I have an empty folder here called Condor Data. Um, we, So if I do ls on that folder, oh, it's still mounted from earlier. Let me unmount it to make this demo more exciting. Okay, so this is just an empty folder, right? When I don't have anything mounted on it, it's an empty folder on my hard drive. That's, whenever you mount something, you always have to mount an empty folder. This isn't unique to SSHFS, this is unique to mounting anything in Linux which maybe you haven't done before, but you will at some point in the future. So it's the name of where I want to mount it. So this is any empty folder that I have write access to, and then it's whatever folder I want to mount. So again, I'm using the shortcut. So this expands to my entire condo. I mean, you, you, I can put the full thing here. I can do condo.ansula.com. I can do user app in front of it. But I have a config file that has all that info. I happen to know that on my server, I have a slash data storage slash user. Um, the music store, uh, and this is where I keep all my music on my remote server. So I just happen to know this is my path, right? This is going to be different for you guys, but this could just be if I just did dot slash, this would be my Elra home directory of this run Elra, right? Whatever. Um, I then run this, and it returns. Now, if I repeat that same command I did a minute ago, it looks like it has files in it, because as far as Linux is concerned, it does have files in it, right? So I've mounted this folder. These files are on the local machine. When I did that ls command in the background, it used SSH, it connected to my server, it, uh, again, it would have asked me for my password right there and some type certificates, so it's using the key file. Um, it connected to my server, it basically did an ls on the server, and then it brought the results back here. So this becomes really easy. Uh, so I use a program called CMUSE. CMUSE is a command line music player because I'm cool like that. Right? Uh, so if you're an Emacs fan or a VIA, it's actually really close. It has a lot of the same hotkeys as Vim. But if you're a Vim fan and you want to play music on the command line like a badass, uh, you can install this program. It's pseudo apt to get install CMUSE. But I can essentially, I'm going to browse to 
So this, n nothing we're looking at now is on my local computer, right? This has a tiny ass hard drive. This is on a giant RAID array sitting on the other side of Boulder right now. So I can go pick out some song. Um, I don't care what people want to hear. Uh, we'll play Foreigner, because it doesn't get any classier than Foreigner. This is also going to make my YouTube video get copyright take down at this rate, because now I'm going to have music in the background. So, <laughs> pick a Foreigner song of your choice, and I can essentially start playing it. We're streaming this over the internet, right? If I bring up my system now, you're as cold as ice. So we'll to sacrifice I mean, you can see the network traffic, right? So, and this is a black file, so it's lossless. So it's actually a fairly, this would be a lot higher, or it would just be a lot lower if I were streaming it. You know, but I have fast internet connections everywhere I go. My phone has 4G, I can tether through it, right? I have a big server at home. I can go anywhere I have 4G service. I can connect my computer through my phone to my server back home, and I can play my music anywhere. And I don't need, you know, Google Music. I don't need, uh, I don't need Spotify, I don't need the Amazon Cloud Store. I have my own Cloud Store. And I have to write me code, right? I just sew together a few different tools, and I'm set. So SSHFS becomes really handy when you want to do clever things like this, uh, or just be convenient. So, that's all I have. Thanks for coming. Next week we're doing Git, so if you want to hear more about Git, show up next week, and I'll also be announcing the March schedule then. I don't know what we're going to do next month. Next uh, Wednesday's the last session this month. It'll be Git. Next month will probably be some more advanced topics. This was kind of the core topics this month. Thanks a lot, guys. These videos will be online later. You can always email me, andrew.sailor at colorado.edu. That information's associated with the email reminders you probably got earlier today. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to you can do one-on-one or hit you up, so on and so forth. All right, thank you.